What up, YouTube? It's your boy, Reason Out is coming at you once again. Now I'm going to give you the nitty-gritty, in-depth, detail, packed up, good, the bad, the ugly reaction to the Nintendo Direct yesterday. Last video, we went down the whole list and just little mini reactions of mine on all the games that the announcer showed. Now we're going to get to what I really loved and what I really hated. Now looking at this list, like I said, Super Mario Maker 2, that is fucking on point. That is much needed. Uh, and you can see the way that they got around using the touchscreen. Because while they're showing the gameplay, you see the little these little radio wheels come up with all the different options. And they like you can spin them and, ta -ta -ta -ta, and you select what you want, and that's how you get your tools. So there's no need for a stylus, there's no need for touching the screen. All right there, button. Perfect, man. The Wii U gamepad was the pinnacle of that touch screen gaming thing with the stylus and all that. If you ain't got that now, this is a good way to substitute for it. And it's adequate. It looks streamlined, it looks good. We got slopes now, finally. I mean, that became a hashtag of like the day. I said, we got slopes, nigga! Slopes! So we got slopes, we got a bunch of, now you can control, when you have a scrolling level, like in Super Mario Bros. 3 on the airships, when it's like scrolling, you can control when it scrolls up, when it scrolls down, so you can, you get real intricate with the with, with the tinkering up in this motherfucker, man. This looks awesome. And like I said, the Super Mario 3D art style, done in 2D, oh my god, dude, when I saw that, like I said, I threw bills at the fucking, uh, at the monitor, I was just like, god damn it, man, there goes, the kids don't eat this mom's shit, man, it, it, it's... That I, I was very impressed with that. And the fact that they let off with that. I was like, okay, we, we, we're in for some shit if they're starting with this. And like I said, you know, Marvel Ultimate Alliance was cool. looks real, uh, real uh, what's the word? Real, real fun, man. A good beat them up, you know what I'm saying? So, I'm down for that. Uh, what else? I'm trying to get into what I really, really liked, man. Uh, yeah, we already talked about the Starlink update. Uh, Yoshi's Crafted World. I, I was in the demo. Man, it really is... Uh, Man, it's one of those games that you got to play it to really see how, how fucking badass it is. Uh, and that is the word. Most people oh, it's a cute game, this and that. It's a beautiful game. It's super adorable. And the music and all that. And Yoshi's just a fucking lovable character. But the, 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 the exploration, the backtracking, the flipping the world around, going on the other side, playing through it, and then playing back to the other side, all the little secrets you find, the fact that you can throw his eggs into the distance and into the foreground. It's not just forward, back, and up. He can throw into the background. He can throw at the screen. Yo, it's so much stuff there, man. And the graphical aesthetic of this game, the art style, is fucking, it's awesome, dude. If you thought Woolly World looked amazing with the yarn look, now this 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 one has like a plushy look. Uh, it's jokes. I can't I can't wait for this, man. I it's right it's next month. So, anyways, man, that was that was awesome. The fact that they dropped the demo to let you see it. That's what I liked about this direct. And Nintendo was like, yo, here's the trailer. Oh yeah, well we already know about that game. Okay, well motherfucker, shut up. Here's the demo. Play. And I was like, oh shit. So that was cool. Um, what else are we gonna do? Okay, and Damon X Machina. I did get into the demo a little last night, but I got my wife next to me. And she's talking my fucking ear off. I got the volume down, so she doesn't think I'm trying to drown her out. So I can't fucking hear the music. I can hear it, and and it's very intricate. Like you start off, and you're just you're you're, you're customizing your character, and then you're customizing your mech, and and, and the, the options were kind of limited. But I could tell that's because it was demo purposes. When the, when the, when it's the final product, you're gonna have a shitload of options. It's gonna be very very intricate. Uh, but you everything from hair, eyebrows, scars on the face, facial hair, aging, whatever. Boom, the mech color. What, what paint job here? What paint job here? Uh, all these different zones and designs and all that. And then I got into the actual gameplay. It feels real good with the mech when you're flying or when you're you know running, sliding through the sand and all that, uh, and you're firing both weapons. You have uh, LR and ZR. It's real cool. It looks like it's gonna be a very very tactile, action packed game. I think it's gonna have online multiplayer. I think that's what they said when they first revealed the game. But the art style is breathtaking. It is breathtaking. It reminds me. The art style reminds me of Red Steel too. It's that kind of graphic novel. Uh, um, how can I say it's like. It's like if you take a graphic novel, a color graphic novel, and brought it to life in 3D. But the, but the textures and the colors are all that same paint job that you would see in a, in a comic book. Awesome. Super clean. Music. When I, The little bit that I could hear with my fucking wife yapping my ear off was epic, man. Just in the character design screen. It was like this epic, like, fucking, like, ah, oh, let's go to war, bro. I, I, I really can't wait for this game, man. So uh, that's, uh, that's, that's cool. Then we had... Um, <clears throat> Oh, okay, so now we're going to jump into some stuff that I didn't like. I'm going to go back and forth. It's not just going to be like and then hate. It's going to be like, hate, like, hate. We go back and forth. Mortal Kombat 11. Okay, this, is, this, is where I, I, this is where I look at Nintendo and I'm just like, what the fuck was you thinking? Oh. This is Mortal Kombat, okay? 
I'm not just saying this because I'm biased and I'm a fan. Y'all know, if you know anything about video game history, y'all know that the reason why when you buy a game, hold on, goddamn it. When you buy a game, this Soul Calibur 2 on the GameCube, when this little doohickey right here, this uh, rating system, Mortal Kombat was the main, it's not the sole cause, but it was the main perpetrator and the main cause of the creation of this. Okay, because it impacted the video game world and society as a whole on such a huge level because of the violence that had never been seen to that level in a game. Okay, so we're not talking about any old fucking franchise here. We're talking about the god of fighting games. All right, and a fucking pivotal player in video game history. And when you show the Mortal Kombat trailer on your Nintendo Direct, you gave it two and a half fucking seconds. I actually thought they got cut off. It was like, oh, boom. The, 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 what did they say? What, what stupid fucking line did they say? They said, oh, this shows that the, the, the fighting saga that's been 25 years in the telling is far from over. That's it. We saw Baraka. We saw Rain, Liu Kang, and Kung Lao. That was it. No gameplay whatsoever, even though we've had gameplay galore shown. That was just stupid. That, 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 that's where Nintendo loses points. That's why third parties sometimes don't want to work with you. Because you don't give their games any real fucking love. I mean, Jesus Christ, two and a half, four, whatever it was, four seconds for Mortal Kombat 11? When was the last time you had Mortal Kombat on Nintendo? You think you'd be making a big deal about this. You know, fuck. <laughs> you didn't even give us the release date, so we still don't know if it's coming out day and date or if that delay that's happening out in Europe and all that is going to happen here also. We don't even know. And it's your direct. This is your job to tell us. So that shit pissed me off. Uh, the un uh, Assassin's Creed. Oh, my God. What we saw. Assassin's Creed. Not Origins. Not Odyssey. Not even one of the more. Re not even four. Okay. Black Flag, which was amazing that everybody loved. Assassin's Creed 3, a game that I bought in 2012, 2013, the latest, six to seven years ago. That's the game. That and Liberation, those are the games you picked? Why? And what would make you think that those fucking games are going to sell dick on the Switch? Just because the Switch sells like crazy? No, and then on top of that, they're not the most popular Assassin's Creed games, so you're fucked up there. And then the other thing is, they look like shit. Those trailers looked horrible. I played Assassin's Creed 3 on my Wii U not more than a month or two ago. It looks a lot better than what you showed there. So, so there's that. You know. <laughs> what else we had? Uh, okay. Uh, all right. One thing I did love. Astro Chain. Good God. World. When I saw that trailer, the way it started, I swore up and down. I was like, this is Monolith Soft. Because there's a shot that reminded me of the Xenoblade uh, X uh, reveal trailer in all those E3s ago, where you see the back of the legs and the walking, and you just see the boots walking like that. And I'm like, oh, this is Monolith. And it wasn't, dude. I saw the name Hideki Kamiya, and I was like, Platinum! Ah! <laughs> dude, the game looks amazing. I don't even know how to really describe it. You gotta watch the trailer. It's like in the future, this futuristic city, you got these futuristic cops that, that, that they can morph in, like, it's almost like Power Rangers, they're like, blah, blah, morph in them, they have these mech suits come on, and they're fighting this giant robotic monster boss there, and they're, the two cops are like tethered together by like an energy beam from wrist to wrist, so they're pulling off combos with that chain, throwing one of them up in the air, and slamming them on the boss, and all this crazy shit, graphically, dude, that shows you what the Switch can do, man, when it's fucking used correctly, man, when games are optimized and coded and programmed and, and designed with the hardware in mind. The game looks awesome, man. I cannot believe we finally got a fucking platinum game on this bitch and, and, and a brand new IP. This was where I was just like, yes. That, that, that to me was probably the, probably, if not the most, one, like the second or third most impressive reveal that I saw yesterday. I can't fucking wait. August 30th. That, that, that date, you notice how I haven't given a lot of dates because I don't fucking remember. I, don't, I know it's a lot of them are in summer or whatever. That one I remember. August 30th. There. Um, okay. This was the number one thing I hated. This was the number one thing I fucking hated. Are y'all ready? Are y'all ready? Y'all think it's a coincidence I wore this shirt for this video? 
This is the shirt I wore to the midnight launch of the Switch when I picked up my Switch and that beautiful bitch Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. We had a Zelda review, if you can call it that. The much rumored, much leaked Link's Awakening, the original Game Boy game, is being remastered and remade on the on the Switch. The top down traditional Zelda. I like the 3D Zeldas better, but whatever. I'll get down with whatever with Zelda. Here's the thing, man. It's a, okay, so boom. We open up. Bubbles and water. All of a sudden, you see these rolling waves, and there's a thunderstorm, and there's a tiny little boat going up this giant wave, and then it zooms in, and you just see the elf ear off the side, and the tunic, and all that. Then you see the boots, and you know it's Link. And they zoom into the face, and it's like that 19, late 1980s, early 1990s Link cartoon, like the, like the cartoon show, that kind of character design, animated, hand-drawn, animated, beautiful, holding the ship, you know, the, the sail and all that. And I'm like, oh, nigga, yeah, here we go. Boom, crashes, washes up on the island. You see the, the fucking island looks beautiful. The art style looks amazing. You got the giant egg on top of the volcano. So you know now this is Link's Awakening. Then they get to the gameplay. And somebody tell me why in the fuck Link looks like one of the Santa's elves in the 1990-91 animated Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer movie. The little one that looks like the clay and it's like stop motion animation. Look at Santa's elves. There's a little blonde one. I think he's the one that wants to be a dentist. Link looks like him. Why? First of all, that's a stupid fucking decision. That art style just ruined the fucking game for me. Second of all, how do you have an opening with that type of art style and that animation and that epicness? And then the gameplay is something that looks like it belongs to a whole different game. It looks like it does not even match at all. And, and, and then what's more criminal, I don't know if you guys noticed, but when you saw the logo, right before I showed you the gameplay, you saw the Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening. It had this same Z. I don't think it had the flowers, but it had the same Z with the little like slits right there. Which, if I'm not mistaken, was only, only started being used with Breath of the Wild. So if that's the case, and we see that same text, that same font, what do you think we're associating it with? Breath of the Wild. And we get this. I'm perfectly fine with a top-down Zelda, traditional. But if the art style could have been the same as what we saw in the beginning cinematic, top-down, hand-drawn, animated, epic. Or even better, if it could have been the same engine and the same graphical look and art style of Breath of the Wild, but just top-down. That would have been amazing. Because then the combat would have been awesome from top-down, but as you get it now, with this type of art style where Link looks like a little bobbling toy, the combat is the old elementary step, step, spin, he can't, he can't block with his shield unless he's facing that direction. Bing, bing. Get the fuck out of here, man. This ain't 1992, man. That shit, that shit, that, that, that burned my ball sack, man. I was so mad when I saw that. That was the main reason I was so negative when my boy Jason hit me up. I was like, nigga, don't even talk to me right now, dude. I, I, I need to calm down. I, I was so fucking mad. That was like the biggest misstep that I saw from Nintendo. The biggest misstep I've seen in a long time. It's like, look, man, when you did Wind Waker all those years back, the original Wind Waker, people blasted you for that art style, right? And it took them fucking almost a decade, if not more, to be like, wow, it's a beautiful art style. That's 10 years too late. You want to go through that shit again? For us to look back 10, 15 years on the line? Well, that was a beautiful, vibrant game. Or you want to make money now when, it, when you release it? Come on, man. That... Uh, but overall, man, I did enjoy the Nintendo Direct highly. I think there's a lot of games in there. I have easily, and I'm running out of time, so I but I have like easily in my memos here, I put uh, easily there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight games I'm interested in. Mario Maker 2, Damon X Machina, Yoshi's Craft of the World, Astro Chain, Marvel Ultimate Alliance 3, Bloodstained Ritual of the Night, The Startling Battle for Atlas Update, and Grid Autosport. So there's a lot, a lot of shit there, man. Anyways, man, Nintendo's coming out swinging a lot of content. Just some missteps. See, typical Nintendo stupid shit that they do from time to time, but they're still the shit, man. And the Switch looks like it's going to have a fucking hell of a year because this is just the beginning, man. God bless y'all. Stay gaming. Peace.